Could a lawsuit over economic development incentives in Eau Claire imperil the Foxconn project? The State Department of Justice says yes, and it's intervening in the lawsuit. It's a question over cash payments to developers or companies done through a tax incremental financing district, a TIF district. The Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty is suing the city of Eau Claire, claiming its cash grants to developers of a performing arts center are an illegal property tax rebate. But if the Eau Claire deal is unconstitutional, what does that mean for the Foxconn deal? Foxconn also stands to receive cash payments through a TIF district in the village of Mount Pleasant. The Eau Claire case is now before the state Supreme Court, and we're talking now with Rick Essenberg, president of Will, who filed suit against the city of Eau Claire. Rick Essenberg, good to have you back on the program. Well, thanks for having me, Mike. So in layman's terms, break this down for us. What, what are you really saying in your lawsuit against the city of Eau Claire? Well, look, tax incremental financing does an extraordinary thing. It takes taxpayer money and it gives it to a developer or a private party. Because of that, the legislature has carefully limited the circumstances under which it can be undertaken. And our lawsuit against Eau Claire was to ensure that those conditions are actually present. Now, the small part of it that deals with Foxconn has to do with something in our state constitution called the uniformity clause. The uniformity clause provides that property taxation must be uniform. So everybody's if, assessed property if tax. If you the and same I way. have a home, we have to pay the same amount of property tax on it. And because of that, the Supreme Court has said the municipalities can't do workarounds by giving a tax rebate. So it can't come to you and say, Mike Goucher, we really would wish that you build an addition to your home so that the neighborhood will look better. The tax increment will go up. Your property value will go up. You'll owe more property tax, but don't worry. We'll pay you for half of the cost of the improvement. That violates the uniformity clause. And so one of the arguments that we're making in our case uh, uh, that uh, originated up in Eau Claire, but it's only one, right. is that when a municipality makes a cash payment directly to the taxpayer from this new development or increment that is supposedly caused by the tax incremental financing, that's a tax rebate. That violates the uniformity clause. That's unconstitutional in right. your opinion. Now, there is a small part of the Foxconn deal, and, and you know, I... I uh, I have great respect for Attorney General Schimmel and the people in uh, uh, his office, but I think to say that our lawsuit imperils the Foxconn deal may be a bit of an overstatement. Well, it's three billion in incentives, but this is a hundred million dollars. If if you were to win, for example, before the court, and they said that uh, what happened in the city of Claire could not happen, for example, in Mount Pleasant, hundred million dollars is a hundred million dollars, isn't it? Well, but it's a hundred million dollars now too. The only difference is is that right now Mount Pleasant can say. We're not raising your property taxes. We're taking this from the increment. And uh, if, in fact, uh, the payment would violate the uniformity clause, they just have to structure the payment in a different way. And they'd have to admit that they're raising property taxes in order to provide a subsidy to Foxconn. Now, you know, that may be uh, right. That may be a perfectly appropriate way. Well, no. The hundred million would still be there because Foxconn is still going to build the plant. The property values are going to go up, and those taxes can be levied. But what they would have to do is they would have to make any payment that they make to Foxconn out of general revenues. You said Foxconn's still going to do the deal. Uh, the state's argument, obviously, is that Foxconn might say, whoa, wait a second. That's $100 million that you said was going to be coming to us in the form of direct cash payments. That's not coming. No deal. Well, you know, I have great respect uh, for the people in the governor's office and everyone that's involved in this transaction. And I am confident that they're not going to lose a $3 billion deal over $100 million, which is a lot of money, I grant you. But in, in, uh, in the context of the Foxconn deal, it's the type of change that you find in the cushions. And I'm sure that they can restructure the deal if, in fact, the Supreme Court uh, rules in our favor, and if, in fact, there is not a way to distinguish the payments that are being made in Foxconn. Because remember, our lawsuit wasn't about Foxconn. Right. We started it years ago. It had to do with the Confluence Project up in Eau Claire, mm -hmm. and uh, our uniformity argument was uh, part of a number of uh, problems we have with the way that that uh, TIF district was put together. Is this an awkward position for your organization? You see eye to eye, I think, on a lot of legal issues with the governor, with the attorney general. Here you are um, challenging something that in some ways they say could have an impact on 
the centerpiece of Governor Walker's economic development efforts. Is that awkward? Well, you know, uh, look, we're a nonpartisan organization. Um, uh, we uh, we uh, have a free market orientation. Because we have a free market orientation, um, we tend to be seen as allied with a political party that is more likely to favor free market solutions. That tends to be the Republicans, and so people think that we're al uh, aligned with Governor Walker. But I think that this lawsuit is a, a perfect example of the way in which um, uh, we're not, we don't always agree. Uh, and there have been uh, a number of instances in which our position and the position of the Attorney General and the Walker administration has not been the same. Uh, we respectfully disagree. Uh, we, uh, we make our arguments in court, and, and we see what happens. Rick Essenberg is the president of the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. It's good to have you back on the program. Thanks very much for Thank being you. with us today. Coming up, reports of Paul Ryan's possible retirement. Do they ring true?